Good morning, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, or rather I should say good afternoon. Great to be back with you again for our weekly chat a day earlier, because it's our Christmas week. We have holy services tomorrow and Friday and Saturday and Sunday. But we're back. Uh, we hope that this p past week has been a blessed one for you and your loved ones. We hope that you're all doing well, that you're staying safe, that you're practicing smart behavior, but most importantly, that you're taking the time to be family in everyday life. So, as those of us on the, the old calendar, or Julian calendar, get ready to celebrate the glorious feast of our Lord's Nativity, today let's truly be festive and listen to some wonderful Christmas music, as well as reflecting on what the feast of our Lord's birth means for us spiritually. So stay tuned. As always in our podcast, if you have any comments or questions or thoughts, Share them with me, and I'll try to get to them as soon as I can. Let's start with our prayer to the Holy Spirit. O Heavenly King, the comfort of the Spirit of truth, who are everywhere and fearless all things, treasury of blessings and giver of life, come and abide in us and cleanse us from every impurity. And save our souls, O good one. So, let's open our show with some music. The beautiful Tuprayan of the Feast of Our Lord's Nativity, Serbian chant, sung by the St. Mary's Minneapolis Choir, Choir of Minneapolis, Minnesota. Where did it go? <laughs> I, sorry, I had it and all of a sudden it's not here. There it is, okay. My goodness. If you want to eat healthy and feel your best, you got to try Kachava. Kachava is the world's. Let me share with you a, a beautiful, beautiful story that happened to my dear wife and I uh, the day after New Calendar Christmas, December 26th. Um, it was late at night. We were both nodding off in our in our comfy chairs, and our back doorbell rang, and went to the door, of course, looked out the peephole, because late at night, you know, where we live is not exactly the, the safest place, I noticed there was a, uh, a man standing there, who had been to our parish house several times for help, so I opened the door, and I said, can I help you? It's like, really late. All he did was pull up his pant legs 
and showed me that he had bare feet in worn sandals. And he said to me, Do you have any socks? My feet are freezing. I was so overcome. My initial angst about having to answer the door so late was quickly replaced with shame. That here is a man obviously walking late at night because he needed socks. So, by God's grace, we were able to help him with not only with socks, but with some food, uh, a blanket, and, and um, he did not want to be taken any place. He wanted to go back to where he was. Why do I share that? I think because that is the essence of, of what this holy Christmas season really is about. It's not about focusing on giving great gifts to you know, our children, our grandchildren, our spouses, our nieces, nephews, whatever. Not at all. It's about having that, that, that core of, of Christian love and compassion and understanding and patience to sort of always look to get out of ourselves and focus on the needs of, of those truly in need. Not just what we think, but what is presented to us. In the case of, of mine, you know, this, this, this poor unfortunate fellow who came to our house. Um, I, I think too many times, especially during the holiday season, so many things happen that take our, our, our focus and our gaze off of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, um, that makes our ears less attuned to, to God's Word, and our hearts even less yearning for things that are holy. And that's why I think Christmas is, is this feast is so, so vitally crucial to our salvation. You know, the, the whole theme of Christmas, you know, Snami Bog, God with us, means that we are filled with not only His Holy Spirit, but His grace to be His emissaries, His illuminators, if you will, of, of Christian virtues, love and kindness and compassion and understanding and mercy and, and to, to live that out constantly in our everyday lives. We're not called to, to judge people when they ask for help. We're not called to look at them askance as if, you know, you know they're different, uh, they look different, they dress different, they smell different. Not at all. We're supposed to reach out to them as Christ would reach out to them. You know, what's that wonderful phrase that we used to hear uh, back in the, in the uh, forgive me, late 80s, early 90s, I think it was then, WWJD, right? What would Jesus do? Um, well, we know what Jesus would do. We know what he did. And from that point on, set, set the standard for us. But what's that standard? That standard, of course... I love when the computer acts up. Uh, the standard is, of course, that God with us means that he came to us. God became man in the flesh for one reason and one reason only. To save us. To give us the opportunity to be filled with his grace. To live a life filled with Christian compassion. Christian forgiveness. Christian repentance, to help us stay on the road to salvation by recognizing in the poor, the needy, those who are not like us, and to help us be able to practice Good Samaritan behavior wherever it might turn out to be in our lives. Somehow I think 
my own personal reflection. You can react, react wherever you want. I think we're, we're so caught up in, in our own little familial circles, you know, um, and I get it, you know, with this whole COVID pandemic that's been going on for two years, uh, you know, we, we still try to find ways to, to, to sort of like circumvent all that by being with family. Um, but I really think it's more important to, to constantly be thinking, what can I do to bring Christ to others? What can I do to, to help others, either by acts of kindness, by reaching out to people who are physically in need, um, by helping out through you know, running, running errands for people, uh, you know, I know I know some of my prisoners who are doing the uh, uh, oh, meals on wheels. Forgive me. Yeah, um, it's wonderful. I know prisoners who are who are going out and taking you know food and clothing and, and goods to to shut-ins in the community. Awesome. I also know people who are very judgmental. Um, you know, some of the families that we helped. Uh, during the Christmas holiday that just passed for the, for new calendar, um, were families with with a large number of children, and and I, I've had comments that, well, you know what, maybe if they learn not to have that many children, you know, they wouldn't be in such dire needs. Not really Christ-like. Not really Christ-like, and more importantly. It just shows that our focus is elsewhere. Our focus need not be on ourselves. This time of, of the holy season of our Lord's Nativity is precisely a, a, a way to, to, to inject in us that, that desire and that incentive to be, you know, like the shepherds, you know, like the wise men, constantly seeking and sh searching for the truth, the revealed light of Christ, right? The son of righteousness who comes into the world. And we have to do that by how we live our daily lives. Okay, let's take our first break and listen to the beautiful Snami Bog sung by our beloved St. Saba Serbian Orthodox Choir of McKeesport, Pennsylvania. Peace of God, Christ is born. On behalf of all of us here at St. Saba's Serbian Orthodox Church, in McKeesport, Duquesne, Pennsylvania, we want to wish all of you, dear followers, our parish families, our parish council, our friends in Kumavi, a joyous and blessed Christmas, a day filled with the love of God, but also a blessed and joyful New Year, one that is filled with God's grace, so that we always will be united in Christ. Again, Christ is born, glorified him. <laughs>
these ads before YouTube saved songs is just unbelievable. Your Lord have mercy. I'm thinking, as as the Holy Feast and Nativity draws closer, I need to share another little reflection with you. Um, I, I'm missing a, a dear friend of, of mine personally, my dear wife and I, but also a friend of our parish, who was not an Orthodox Christian, but started coming to our parish several years ago. And his name, oddly enough, was Joseph. Joseph was a beggar. If you saw Joseph, he, he fit the the generalization of what a beggar would look a beggar would look like. Ill kept, smelly, horrible clothes, looked dirty. By God's grace, he started coming to our parish at least, if not longer, at least three years ago, maybe four. And yes, initially was coming for handouts was coming for food, was coming for gift cards, was coming for money, whatever. And of course, in typical human behavior fa fashion, he would come and sit in the very last pew of our, of our church, right at the end, so he was not bothering anyone. Also in, in, in typical sinful human behavior, some of the people who generally sat there in that area moved away. So it was pretty obvious that um, Joseph's presence kind of stirred the, the waters, troubled the waters um, amongst some of, of, of our faithful. The wonderful beauty of, of God sending Joseph to us was that he kept coming. Not only did he keep coming, he would take the time. We had, you know, Orthodox study Bibles in our, in our church pews, and he would read Constantly. Eventually, he and I became good, good friends. We would go out to lunch, talk about scripture. He would ask me all kinds of questions. Had a deep desire to become Orthodox. Was always very hesitant, and here was the reason why. As many times as I asked him, well, let me, by God's grace, bring you into the church. As many times as I asked him, he always said to me, consistently, Father, I am not worthy of such a community. I'm so beneath them. No. No, I do not want to dis dis dishonor your parish. He kept saying that. One Lenten season... At the end of liturgy, Sunday liturgy, one of my parishioners came up and said to me, they caught Joseph downstairs going through people's coat pockets. What are you going to do about it, Father? So, Joseph is coming up for, for Holy Antideron, Nafada. And I said to him, Joseph, I was told that you were going through people's coat pockets. Is that true? His lip started quivering and he started shaking. He goes, yes, it's true. I, I, wasn't, I just needed a, a little bit more help. I said, all you have to do is ask. You don't have to steal, especially not in God's house. He was, he was just so beside himself. And I said to him, Probably my sinfulness, but I said to him, listen to me. I will help you today, but you are not permitted back in, in, in the parish, in my community, in my church, in our church, at any services, until you are ready to publicly stand before the people and ask their forgiveness because you stole from them. And he understood. And he left. Not the end of the story. Again, Joseph is not orthodox. I'm 
I forget how much time passed. Guess when Joseph showed up again? At the beginning of the Lenten season, Forgiveness Sunday. When our parish does the rite of forgiveness. He has no idea. He's not orthodox. He did not have our schedule. He just showed up. And I said to my, my tonsured reader, because he came up to me, he goes, Father Stevo, Joseph is here. I said, go ask him if he's ready to, to apologize to everyone, to ask their forgiveness. He comes back in the altar, he goes, yes, he said he is. God is so wonderful. So if you're familiar with the right of forgiveness, the priest initiates asking people to forgive, and then we move on. We line up, we ask forgiveness of one another. So that wonderful Sunday morning, I called Joseph up, and the people were like aghast that he was there. He had returned. And I said, I, I believe you wanted to speak to our, 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 our people. He took the microphone and started crying as he asked forgiveness of everyone for trying to steal from their coats months ago. He was so sorry. He didn't know what else to do. But he knew he had to come back and he had to ask forgiveness. Probably the greatest example of, of forgiveness in action that I've ever witnessed, ever. That day, my entire parish, all who were present, were in tears as they joyfully ex exchanged the right of forgiveness with one another, thanks to Joseph. In his wonderful wisdom, our Lord took the beautiful soul of Joseph a couple of years ago at a relatively young age. Um, and I really think it's because um, Joseph could not bear the burden of seeing humanity so uncaring in where he lived, but also so willing to, to learn and grow in his being able to evangelize and, and to enlighten us as, as a body of Christ. We will always remember the wonderful memory of, of Joseph. Um, he was a gift from God for our parish. And that's the kind of, forgive me for going on, but that's the kind of, of example that Christ wants us to experience in this holy Christmas season. To be always on the lookout for those who are in need. Those who are, for whatever reason, lacking. That is our responsibility as Christians. To reach out to those and to help them as best we can. So, that's all I have for today. I wish I could play more music. Um, but I, I've got um, some appointment for confessions lined up. And I, I can't... Uh, go too much longer with, 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 with our podcast. Um, let me close with our prayer to the Theotokos, as is our custom. A steadfast patriarchate of Christians, constant advocate before the Creator, do not despise the cry of us sinners. May your goodness come speed to help those who call upon you in faith. Hasten to hear our petition and to intercede for us, O Theotokos, for you always protect those who honor you. I hope and pray that all of us will have a, a, a blessed, most beneficial Feast of the Nativity of our Lord, Old Calendar. Those of you who are celebrating Epiphany coming up, a wonderful festal uh, celebration of the Feast of Lights. And we do all we can to live out the true purpose of Christmas and Epiphany in our lives, to bring the light of Christ into the world that is still lacking in it. We love you, dear viewers. Thank you for being with us. Know that we lift you all up in prayer. We ask that you pray for us as well, because truly in lifting each other up in prayer, we are united in Christ. Christ is born. Glorify him.